With Amy Cabo, life can bring many difficult situations, domestic violence, addictions, poverty, and even sexual abuse by your loved ones. Welcome, Amy Cabo and The Cure. Good afternoon and welcome to The Cure radio show. I'm your host, Amy Cabo, joined by Boris, my other half. And Boris will say hi in a second. Yeah. We're just still figuring out how <laughs> okay. to air from New York. Because we are, the show is live, airing from New York. And you can hear this show through our app called The Cure or our website, amyspurpose.com. And later, if you do miss it, it will become a podcast. This show deals with suffering and the tenacity of the human spirit, the will to survive, and the courage to keep moving forward despite any obstacle, with the help of God and each other. We do provide testimonials to let people know that they're not alone. And in this show, the testimonial started with me, having been a survivor from child abuse and well into young adulthood. We also have experts in the medical field and inspirational speakers that are willing to help and give valuable information, knowing that awareness is vital and transparency is needed. I believe we all suffer or have suffered from something and we hope to be a source of healing. My healing came from God, but other forms of healing are presented as well to service everyone. Life can be very challenging, but always know there's always someone who cares. That was good thing by said Kalani. Sometimes we feel that we have a good thing that the grass is greener on the other side, but we have no idea what people suffer. We really don't. And people can suffer from many different things. They can suffer from sudden stardom before we realize that what we believe was a good thing was really a fallacy after all. And God always has something better in mind. Today's show is about redemption. As Peter 2, 9 says, the Lord is not slow in keeping his promises. As some understand slowness, instead he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. Psalm 107, 2 says, let the redeemed of the Lord tell their story. Those he redeemed from the land of the foe. Today we are blessed to have Dario Herrera with us today. At age 22, Dario got elected to the state legislate in Nevada. At age 25, he got elected to the powerful Clark County Commission. At age 28, he won the Democratic nomination for the House of Representatives, 3rd District in Nevada. And not long after, Dario was indicted, convicted, and sentenced to 50 months in federal prison for his role in a public corruption scandal. So he went from the future of the Democratic Party to inmate number 386. 218. Dario Herrera is now one of the country's top branding and marketing experts, having helped some of the most well-known brands in the entertainment industry and has, ha- and has had a tremendous story of remarkable success, failure, failure, resilience, and redemption. As the owner of a boutique, branding, and digital marketing company, He helps entrepreneurs and businesses share their authentic story, build online community, and drive more revenue. 
He works with authors and speakers, celebrities, nonprofits, and small to medium sized businesses. But his story is so much more than the entrepreneurial business. Abandoned by his father at age two, then again by his mother at age 15, Dario's drive and resilience led him to, co to college where he graduated summa cum laude and with the Department of Honors. He leveraged his academic achievement and campus involvement into a campaign position and then Governor Bob Miller's team where he led the grassroots organizational outreach efforts. He quickly became a star in politics before his self-sabotage and shame came up with him, came up to him in what became one of Nevada's biggest political scandals. While he served his sentence, Dario became a church leader, mentor to young inmates, and taught in the GED program. Upon his release, he worked to repair the damaged relationships with his young children and the Las Vegas community. He is a motivational speaker for Stand Up. He serves those in how to stand up after anyone who has fallen down. Dario, thank you for being with us and welcome to The Cure. Thank you, Amy. Thank you, Boris. Uh, how are you guys doing today? How's New York treating you? Pretty cold. Pretty cold. <laughs> and I hope you had a <laughs> great New Year, Dario. Thank, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, happy New Year to you and, and Happy New Year to your listeners. And uh, I want to take a moment real quick, Amy and Boris. You know, we, we, we've gotten confirmation that there have been uh, some airstrikes in Balad uh, that have targeted basically uh, U.S. officers. And uh, I just want to take a moment of silence and prayer and, and really extend in these times of difficulty and conflict, you know, prayer to all those uh, military service men and women who are in harm's way and their families, that may God be with them and may they always be protected. This, these are difficult times for us. Yes. Thank you for that moment of silence for prayer for those who have fallen and thank you so much for that you for that okay but it's okay oh, if mine okay. has a microphone at least you can hear it okay. and then just cl get close to me when you want to be heard <laughs> hug me <laughs> okay that's fine Dario, here's the thing. This, this is crazy. I can't believe that at 22 you were in politics. How is it that somebody gets involved into politics at such a young age? Do you, do you want to start with that, giving us a little bit of background, how it all came to be? Yeah, and, and sometimes, I mean, it's been my life, and I often still, when I reflect on it, you know, can't believe that I was given that opportunity. And, you know, I had never been involved in politics. My family wasn't politically connected or politically oriented. I went to UNLV to attend college here in the uh, University of Nevada, Las Vegas, and came as a business finance major. And then I took my first political science class from my professor. Her name was Dina Titus. She's now a congresswoman, longtime state senator in Nevada. She's a congresswoman now. And I fell in love with politics. I fell in love with the topic. I fell in love with the stories. I fell in love with the opportunity to make a difference. And I found myself in different um, environments where, you know, politics kept coming up. And, you know, I, I, I my first, I have, was never a good student in high school. I was at, at best a, a marginal student and did just enough to get by, really, and stay academically eligible for football and basketball and baseball, etc. But I took college a little bit differently and, and very seriously and you know I got a 4.0 my first semester I got a 4.0 my second semester and I was exploring new topics and learning new subjects and I started to get involved in campus politics I started to get involved in campus organizations uh, the organization of Latinos the pre-law association and, and what was the driving force? It's it's incredible because your father abandoned you and your mother abandoned you. 
I mean, you must have been an orphan. Life was really tough for you. Yeah. And, and, you know, you just, it, it, was, it, it was hard. It, it was hard, Amy. Um, but I also had a, a, somewhat of a support system. For example, my basketball coach you know, really looked after me. Uh, my sister and I, you know, she's a year older than me. We lived by ourselves for most of high school. Uh, I was 15. She was 16. We had jobs. Uh, we paid rent. Uh, we got ourselves to and from school, to and from work. Uh, but my basketball coach was really a uh, big influence in my life. But I think part of it, and, and I don't talk about this very often, but I think part of it was God's work, honestly. Uh, if you look at a kid from my background and, and my experience, you know, I don't know where the drive came from. You know, something clicked, and I went from a marginal student. I was smart, but I, I didn't do the work. I wasn't interested in school. I had a lot of anger and resentment, you know, because of what was happening, you know, to me and my family. And I was a discipline problem. I acted out. I behaved very badly. I had that attitude. Yeah, I mean, sometimes God is always there, and sometimes we fall Oh, we fall astray and that's what we'll talk about next I'm Amy Cabo and this is The Cure we will continue talking about falling and rising in life when we return please stay with us we will be right back with Amy Cabo and The Cure Life can bring many difficult situations. Domestic violence, addictions, poverty, and even sexual abuse by your loved ones. The issue is not stay there, but to overcome all obstacles and show that with the love of God, your husband, and your family, you can succeed. Love is the answer, God is the cure, reveals Amy Cabo's life. A warrior who didn't give up and achieved the dream of her life. You can get to know more about her and her story on GodIsTheCure.com or buying her book on Amazon.com. Now we will continue with Amy Cabo and The Cure. Hi again. This is The Cure. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Amy Cabo. For those who have just joined us, we are talking to Dario Arredo about redemption. We are live on your radio, and you can check our app, The Cure, with Amy Cabo. Later, these podcasts will be available. The radio shows will be available as a podcast. That was Rescue by Lauren Daigle. God always hears your SOS, even the slightest whisper. He's always present and eager to help. Heaven is equipped with the most powerful army that God will send to find you in the middle of the darkness and will always rescue you. We are talking to Dario Herrera, who is sharing his story, helping us with how there's always an opportunity for redemption, no matter how you feel, where you've been, or what you've been through. Which brings, which brings me to my next question, Dario. Something went wrong, and it's not that things haven't gone wrong in your life already. You know, you've known about that since a young age. But then, just when everything seemed to be going your way, life it has its ups and downs and something must have hit hard because you went from a rising star in politics to a prison inmate because you accepted bribes from a strip club owner what happened oh such a, a difficult question honestly i have as you can imagine thought about that very, very deeply. I've prayed about it. I've meditated on it. I've gone through therapy to really understand that. And I think the common answer I come up with is I didn't feel like I deserved success. I didn't feel like I was worthy of the trust that people 
had given me. I didn't feel subconsciously, of course, qualified to be in such an important position of power. I, you know, came from really being abandoned multiple times. And in retrospect, you know, my self-love, my self-worth was seriously lacking. And I was looking for it. And I think, you know, going back to your earlier question, what got me into politics, I think, you know, part of the validation you get from people, even though it's not always sincere or authentic validation, you know, really kind of fills part of that need, that lack that I felt of love and attention, you know, from my family growing up. And I lied to myself. I said, yes, I can, you know, accept bribes from such and such. Uh, without it affecting my decision-making, without it making me partial to that person or to their issues. I didn't think anyone was looking. I thought myself above the law. And, you know, where those thoughts came from, where those actions came from, you know, I, I think we can talk about that forever. But the bottom line is I I knew better. I uh, felt to, into the temptation of power and money and women. And it it took my career, obviously, in a very, very different direction and very, very quickly. And most importantly, it had a tremendous impact on my family. You know, I lost my wife. I was estranged from my children. And the hardest part of the entire process was, you know, that losing my family and then secondarily, knowing that I ran for office to restore faith in politics, faith in the process, and I did exactly the opposite. I confirmed what people believe about politics. I let the people who support me down. I basically betrayed the trust that had been given me, and that was really the most difficult part. It wasn't the newspaper coverage. It wasn't having helicopters fly over my house or you know, my career being over in politics, it was more the realization that I let people down, the people closest to me and the people who had, you know, put their faith in me, I disappointed them in the worst way possible. Well, you're one of the greatest ex-politicians I know, and thank you so much for your honesty. That happens to so many of us, Dario. You don't need to be a politician. I've been praying rosary since I was a little girl, and I felt I got lost. I went into the crazy world of what was a fallacy, what I thought would have made me happy, what I thought was what I needed. And it's, it's, um, it's really refreshing when your eyes are opened and you see what's really important in life and what really counts. And it's not the worldly things. I I have to say, I I have so much admiration for you, Amy. Uh, You know, obviously I've read your book and I see, you know, the work you do, uh, not just with the show, but in your public speaking and the things you do in the community. And uh, you're such an inspiration to all of us, right? And, you know, things that you experienced as a young girl and your development uh, are horrible, and yet you maintain faith. You you continue to believe. You continue to serve. And uh, I have to say, you know, you're really an inspiration to 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 me personally, and certainly to I know the the community that you're building uh, online and offline. You know, your 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 story is remarkable, and I, I just wanted to recognize you for that because. It's uh, the stuff that you went through and the life you're living today and the family you've built uh, is nothing short of a miracle. It's, it's obviously, you know, divinely inspired, uh, divinely guided. Um, but I think, you know, what you've done to prepare yourself to receive those blessings is nothing short of incredible. All I can say, Dario, is, is thank you. But all I can say is that God is extremely good. And people like you and I and those we know and those around us that are beautiful are proof of that. 
because there's so much evil in this world, but there's also so much good. And it's refreshing. I mean, you were, you were talking, how did you handle the, the, the downfall, the getting sentenced, the losing your family? Was that a awakening call for you? Or did that drive you down th the wrong path even further? Uh, I, I think more than an awakening, it was, and I know people are surprised when I say this, but it was a relief. I remember when I surrendered and I was sitting in the holding cell before I got transferred to uh, the federal prison camp. I remember feeling relief. A relief in that I no longer had to live a life that wasn't mine. Uh, a relief that I didn't feel like a fraud anymore, that I had to pretend to be someone who I wasn't, that I had to make people happy, and that I could you know, come to terms with things that I did. And that I could really, in that moment, uh, make one of two choices. You know, live in denial and blame other people for you know, the things that I did, or accept responsibility and really begin to start the repair process, and not just with my family, but with myself, right? And really start the long journey of, you know, establishing or keeping a relationship with my children, uh, trying to, you know, honor their mom as best as I could, you know, as I was serving time. And, and you know, that's the only way to heal. heal. That really that's is the only way to heal, heal when you come to terms with with what you've done. I'm Amy Cabo, and this is The Cure. Please call if you want to share your story of redemption. Oh, sorry, you can't call. <laughs> we'll be right back. With Amy Cabo and The Cure. Oh, that is so funny. Poor, poor Dario. At least he, he gets to be on the show. <laughs> So to God I say, thank you for bringing me through When you feel you can't take no more And you have lost into your heart's door God's gonna work it on, God's gonna work it God's gonna work it on out When you've done all you can do And feel no one wants you God's gonna work it on, God's gonna work it on God's gonna work it on out When you feel you can't take no more and you have lost into your heart's door. God's gonna work it on, God's gonna work it, God's gonna work it on out. And now we will continue with Amy Cabo and The Cure. Welcome back, guys. This is The Cure, and I'm Amy Cabo with Boris, always sitting by my side. <laughs> you can listen to just <laughs> You can listen to us live every Saturday at 1 p.m. on your radio. We also have an app, The Cure, and our website amyspurpose.com that was God gonna work on it out I love it any day that goes by every single day I thank God for helping me make it through I know what it feels like when I can not make it anymore I know what it feels like when you feel like you've done all you can do and I know what it feels like for nobody to want me I can continue <laughs> But every single time, God worked it out. How often do we worry about making ends meet or living paycheck to paycheck, yet every time we somehow make it, every time we find a way, always if we have God in our lives, not if we're lost. But most of the times, we worry for nothing. How many times does God have to work it out for us to finally trust that He will? God is a huge stress reliever. As I recently learned in a Facebook post that stress, worry, and fear is a lie. Don't believe the hype. That's pickpocket. We are talking to Dario Herrera about redemption. Dario, you have quite a successful marketing company and you've worked with some famous, famous people and one on brands. How did you go from inmate to CEO and co-founder 
of such a successful marketing company and become successful again. Dario, is your company called Inmate Advertising? Just joking. No. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting. When I, before I went to serve my time, I had always worked in a marketing capacity. I had been a partner in a well-known advertising agency in Las Vegas. I had my own marketing and consulting company. I had worked at the community college and helped them with their communication strategy, in particular, you know, targeting, you know, Hispanic uh, students or potential Hispanic students. And when I got home, it was really difficult to find a job. And even though... Right, that's what I'm thinking. You know, it was hard. It was very hard. And I remember taking the bus ride home and thinking, what do I do now? And I called my attorney. And my attorney was also a very good friend of mine. And he helped me get a job selling printing. <clears throat> I didn't have a car. I didn't have a Rolodex anymore. Of course, you know, people were very reluctant to return my call because of what I had done and the stigma, you know, surrounding me. And wow. I went to work. I, I, I accepted a job that was basically a low level paying job and some commission. And I went door to door selling printing, selling business cards, selling flyers, uh, selling brochures for a eco-friendly printing company. And I worked my butt off. And you can imagine, you know, I had a bike at the time, me riding my bike in the summer of, I got home in June of 2009 and I started to work immediately and I had no car at the time. All I had was... Well, Dario, you know, did, a, did you learn anything, anything in prison? My bike door to door. I'm sorry? Did you learn anything in prison? I, you know, sometimes when you go to prison, you read the Bible. You know, I, I read, I certainly read the Bible and I, you know, read, you know, many other books, but I think I always had a knack, honestly, for uh, brand building, storytelling, and, you know, connecting uh, with people at an emotional level. I think it's part of what helped me in politics was my ability yes. to, you know, connect with an audience and, uh, you know, tell a story, right? And, you know, I think, I think that's part of the foundation that I had, uh, but I got given a chance. Um, after the printing job, I got hired as a chief marketing officer for a private college, and you know we grew their enrollment, you know, very quickly. Uh, and then I got married, and I moved to the Bay Area, and I, I had trouble, you know, finding work in the Bay Area because of my background. And there I wasn't, unlike Las Vegas, I had no network in the Bay Area. It was just, you know, my wife and me. And we basically were trying to figure out what was I going to do. And then, uh, very interestingly enough, the, the gentleman who was the jury consultant on my case uh, was a jury consultant for uh, this Cuban business owner who had done very well, but also had to serve federal time. And he said, you should, you should reach out to him. So I did. And they gave me a trial. They basically put me on staff. And I surpassed their expectations. I, you know, did more than they expected me to. I was very successful. Um, and then, you know, my wife, you know, Shelly, her, her brother is, you know, the music superstar Pitbull. And he was going through a transition in his organization. Uh, she was helping him through that. And he needed, you know, marketing help, uh, in particular, you know, social and digital media. So I, I started learning about social and digital media, and uh, we did a good job for, for Pitbull, and then we worked uh, with a, his, his vodka company, and then uh, Daughtry, you know, from American Idol, uh, his manager reached out to us, and then before you know it, we had Three Doors Down, the American Music Award, Sony Records, uh, Little Wayne, and, and many others um, hiring us you know, for our expertise and our ability to help them build their brand online. 
and, and help them. But, out but wait, a, wait a second, Dario. I know that you can have a lot of talents and things like that, and they can go to waste if you don't believe in yourself, if you loathe yourself, if you hate yourself. And what was the driving force? Were you able to forgive yourself and able to move on and able to rectify your ways? Well, that, yes. Um, I think the driving force was this desire to make things right with the people that I hurt and the people that I hurt the most were my children. And I had to provide for them. You know, I, I had to provide for them. I had they were without me for a long time, and so that's when you stop being selfish and you put your family before you, and that's and that's what I wanted to bring out. It's when we put others first, and we realize it's not about us. It's not about how I can get ahead, but how can I, I be a benefit to others? No, that that that's a good point because I, I never. To me, like staying down was never an option. To me, letting my political fall being the last chapter in my story was never an option. I knew that some way, somehow, I had to get back on my feet. I had to provide for my family. I had to you know, repair my relationship with their mom, my children, the community, myself. And I was just never going to let me being indicted, convicted, sentenced, be, you know, the last story of my chapter. And I just went to work. You know, you you do a little every day. You, you chip away at it. You remain strong. And I think, you know, and this is part of what I talk about in my speech called Stand Up. You know, the first thing is you stop telling yourself stories that no longer serve you. And the story for me was that I wasn't capable of being loved and I wasn't worthy of the position that I had, I stopped telling myself that story. I started to believe in myself. And the second one is, you know, trust that if you do the next right, best thing, you are going to be okay, you know, if, if you trust. And then A, of course, in the stand-up is accept responsibility. And I did accept responsibility. And I served time with guys who blamed it on someone else. They blamed it on the guy who told on them. They blamed it on their partner. They blamed it on the law enforcement. And the only I knew the only person I had to blame was myself. Right. So so those are the things that I think, you know, day to day, looking back on it really took me from, you know, like we've said, being inmate three eight six two one zero four eight to, you know, someone who became very successful in helping others build their brand and, you know, build a nice company and at the same time take care of my family. Yeah, I can see where you're coming from, Dario. And I'll tell you that it was a very good thing that you had a conscience because that means that you're a Christian. And the enemy doesn't waste his time on on Thomas. He, he goes towards the people that are precious and important to God, those who can make a difference, those who matter something. You ever wonder why people who had that, most people that had suffered, they're so good, and you're thinking, why do good people suffer? And, or why did this person suffer so much? They're such a good person. And, or why did this person that doesn't care never suffer? Uh, that's because pickpocket's not interested in them. And the best way to think about it, if you were a pickpocket, if you were putting yourself in his shoes, you'd want to bring down God's, you know, generals or highest ar- or highest warriors. That makes sense. And hit them the hardest, the hardest you can. So that's why I believe you have to pray every day. That's a, that all it comes down to. That's the best defense. <laughs> that's my best, best advice, advice for everyone, for everyone that's, that's listening. listening. I love that story. Pray every day without, without <laughs> When we're back, we will continue talking to Dario Herrera about resilience, perseverance, and redemption. I'm Amy Cabo, and this is The Cure. We will be right back with Amy Cabo and The Cure. 
Life can bring many difficult situations. Domestic violence, addictions, poverty, and even sexual abuse by your loved ones. The issue is not stay there, but to overcome all obstacles and show that with the love of God, your husband, and your family, you can succeed. Love is the answer, God is the cure, reveals Amy Cabo's life. A warrior who didn't give up and achieved the dream of her life. You can get to know more about her and her story on GodIsTheCure.com or buying her book on Amazon.com. No, we're just gonna say wait, wait, this is, this is the best Never song. Never forsake you. Join Dr. Michael Youssef this week on Leading the Way. <laughs> no, no, sweet. Wait, well, after the song, after this. Song. And now today's Pathway Minute with Dr. Robert Jeffers. The oh, basis so the of our salvation is God's grace. The means yes, of salvation. Yes, yes. You're supposed to say. What, what am I supposed to say? No, you're just gonna wait for the camera and say bye at the end. The way God's grace reckoned as righteousness. Pathway Minute is produced by Pathway to Victory. To access yes. the Bible teaching of Dr. Robert Jeffries, go to PTV. Dr. Dr. Robert Jeffries. No! Now we will continue with Amy Cabo and The Cure. Thanks for being with us. I'm Amy Cabo and this is The Cure. You can listen to us live every Saturday at 1 p.m. on our app, The Cure, on your radio, and on social media. Look for Amy's Purpose. Later, the show will be available as a podcast. Search for The Cure with Amy Cabo. Amy Cabo with an I and... Doubt E. Double. Double E. <laughs> on any podcast channel. That was no well performed by Lauren Daigle. Daigle. Thank you. Thank you. Thank There's so <laughs> much suffering in this world and so many okay. bad things That's that good. happen. I wonder if it saddens okay. Noel. I don't want it to sad. Okay. Back, back to me. She got a little excited. That was my little girl. There's so much suffering in the world and so many bad things that happen. I wonder if it saddens Noel. I don't want him to be sad. I want to be his happy times. And just because we don't see it all in the news, there's so much good in the world just the same. Because of God's amazing love, I look all around, all that is beautiful, all that I love, and with gratitude, for God created these things and we're so blessed by this light of the world he has given to us. We are talking about recovery through redemption with Dario Herrera. Dario, I've read that you've given some strong, impassioned, motivational speeches to people who have served time and are trying to get back on their feet. And you're a great example that there's hope for people who have been in jail. So could you tell us more about why you're doing what you're doing and what you hope to accomplish? Well, I, I think if my experience and the things that I went through can serve someone else, there's meaning in it. There's power in it. It will have served a purpose. Uh, yes, my you know political career was crushed because of my selfish and corrupt actions. Uh, yes, my family was affected, but I didn't let that be the final chapter. And I think it's important, given my experience and my desire to serve others, that I share my story and I share the process of you know, when you fall down, how you stand back up, uh, because there is a process. You know, and the title of the speech that I uh, give is called Stand Up, where stand up as an acronym and it basically, you know, takes us through, you know, the seven steps that you have to take to get back on your feet. And uh, I touched a little bit on the S and the T and the A and the N is never give up, right? D is always right forward. 
uh, you would understand that even if you change, people will still see you as that person. So you have to have that strength in yourself, that belief in yourself that you truly have changed, even when people don't see that change in you, right? You have to be... I think it starts a lot with negative talk. I think it starts a lot with negative talk. We feel like we self-sabotage ourselves because of negative talk, and psychiatrists want you to believe that, want you to believe you're broken. But I read this book about the saints who battle Satan, and I happen to know that you're not supposed to think negative, and you're not supposed to do bad things. Those are called temptations. It's a little thought. I call it the first stupid thought. Don't go for that. Take a moment to think. It's usually from you or from God. Or the first action. Just take a moment to think. You do that enough times, you'll learn not to talk negative to yourself. You'll learn not to do the first stupid thing that comes to mind. Well, there's always hope as long as there's God. There's always hope. And I feel so bad for people that don't have faith in God because that's when people give up. I mean, they, they, you, you do good things and you love others because you know it makes God happy because you know God is watching. Tell me somebody who does something good knowing that nobody's watching and just does it. It's not always that's something that's going to make you feel good, but it's always something that you know it's right. You know that it's something that it's pleasing to God, and that will always take you in the right direction. And even when you have negative talks, you could always say, well, eventually God will help me. I went through many years of custody battles, and that's what I would tell myself when I wanted to feel bad. I'm destined to suffer. I'll never get through this. Eventually, God will help me until I acted badly and I did things I was ashamed of and I felt I was a bad person. And then I had to understand the reality of God's sacrifice, how He's willing to forgive any of us, no matter what we've done. That His sacrifice is the ultimate redemption story. That's beautiful. I, I agree. With you. And but the, but there's a nickname you have, Dario, called Legendario on the light and funny side. Where'd you get that from? <laughs> Maybe he's a superhero. Are you a superhero, Dario? <laughs> I'm, you know, I'm 46, but I, I still play flag football like I was, you know, 25. And uh, basically, we, we were playing a younger team, and they saw a bunch of old guys come on the field, basically, in particular me, with all the gray in my beard. And one of the younger guys, a uh, Cuban kid from Miami, started being very funny and, and kind of talking trash to his teammates. Oh, we got these old guys, we got these old guys. And one of the kids said, hey, hey, you better not say that. That's, that's legendario. That's the legendario. Uh, because I've been playing so <laughs> long and won so many championships and traveled the country. Uh, winning, but that's how it kind of started and it kind of stopped. Uh, so I, I think it's funny. I always, you know, I have my social media channels. I say that, but I think it's funny. You know, it's important not to take yourself too seriously. 
but it, it kind of just sucked because of that, because of my flag football days. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Well, you know, you're as young as you feel, as long as you, as young as your mind thinks. You don't have to be so technical. <laughs> That's what I always say. As long as I feel young, I'll grow old gracefully. <laughs> Yeah, I went from I went from being you know almost famous to infamous uh, to legendary. It was a pretty interesting arc. <laughs> well, I was infamous first. Let's see what happens, <laughs> Dario. It's the we we're reaching an end of the show, so maybe a few words for our listeners of encouragement. Just basically, let them know there's hope and uh, you know anything you'd like for them to hear. Yeah, thank you, Amy. First of all, obviously, thank you to Amy and Boris uh, for all the work that you do and for the message of, of hope and faith you deliver every day. I know that you guys have dedicated your lives to this. and um, It's the least we can do. Uh, in, in terms of you know, parting words, I think I'll go back to the notion that we all really do have everything we need within ourselves to build the life we want. You know why? Because God, God provides. That's why. Correct. We, God we, provides. We, we all have, you know, something for a story, whether it's a difficult childhood or abandonment or uh, self-sabotage or some kind of failure. And the important thing is that we recognize it, we own it, we accept responsibility, and that we have this never-ending belief in ourselves that we have been created to do good things. In this on this planet, uh, to serve others, it to says it in the Bible. Bible. To meet our potential, and if we if we hang on to that and if we focus on that every day, everything's going to be okay, no matter what happened in the past, what's happening today, or what tomorrow may bring. Nice, thank you, Dario. Thank you so much for being with us. It was extremely a very touching testimony. More information can be uh, to be found on Dario can be found on, on two dudescreative.com. <laughs> Did you guys hear that? Can you say that again? Okay, we'll say it again in the website amyspurpose.com. Two dudescreative.com. That one. And thank you to our audio producer Jasper for being with us today. Incredible how technology works. He's not even in New York, but thank you so much, Dario, for your patience. Let's, Let's pray. pray. My pleasure. Thank you. Teacher, anytime. Teacher God, take the reins of my life. Lead me where I should go. Teach me what is best. Help me to persevere when times are tough. When I fail, redeem me and lift me up. In your son's name I pray, amen. This is Amy Cabo. You have been listening to The Cure. Please don't forget to check our podcast in the app The Cure or our website, amyspurpose.com. Thank you to our listeners for being with us. And until next week, much love. And next show... We're going to have a special guest, Antonio T. Smith. We're going to talk about his way of finding success and many interesting ideas about excellent attitude, enhance your self-esteem. He even says we have a creative genius inside of us. Wow. What's that all about? I don't know. Nice. <laughs> So guys, thank you so much. Thank you so much for listening and I hope it helps. <laughs> thank you for listening to The Cure with Amy Cabo. For more information or to get Amy's book, Love is the Answer, God is the Cure, or to listen to the podcasts of previous shows, visit GodIsTheCure.com.